section here and if we click if we click edit here we see we have a new OS label as an option now for some reason uh, uh, BERT does have issues with refreshing when you change anything in an OS in, in a data set uh, for the parameters I recommend doing this selecting a different data set and selecting the same data set it was before and changing the value in display text as needed the reason is is because it doesn't actually take that change uh, immediately for some reason you need to go about this process so click OK so now the value will be the normal value lowercase but the label will be something different and we can verify by selecting default value here and do select value now you see Linux Unix and Windows right but uh, and you want to see the uppercase well in this case this will only show you value as it says select value we have to actually run the report again or preview the report to verify that it's operating correctly now we can do this uh, we can still leave our default windows and then we can click OK and now if we uh, save and we go back to our layout uh, and we go back to our report now uh, we're going to need to uh, uh, I believe we might need to close out the report and open it up again for this preview to work but we'll try it. We hit the preview button and we see here we do have the uppercase values Windows, Linux, and Unix. It's still not alphabetically sorted so how do we do that? Okay, so we go back to our library because we want the change to be global and we, and we select over our OS type uh, report parameter and we see in the property editor under the advanced tab we see different properties that we can change the ones that are important to us are sort by which will change the sort by and we have option of value or label now the value is the lowercase value in this case and label is the uppercase if we were to change them drastically like we are going to do for the OS uh, for the resource type we would want to sort by what the end user is seeing because otherwise it doesn't make sense to them so we're going to sort by label and then the sort direction and there's this little bug in BERT you have to click it three times for some strange reason don't ask me why and we're going to sort ascending so that's going to be in alphabetical order now if we just do that by default we're not going to see it sorted if I if I save what we have so far and go back to our report to preview go back to layout and hit preview and we go to select our OS type we see it's not in order still right it's not in order it, why was it not in order we just change it well there's a reason for that go back to our library hover over our OS type and under the selection list twisty we see there's a fixed order at uh, fixed order property which is true which is essentially means anything the way it comes to me is the way I'm going to display it regardless of what you do for the order so we need to change this to false right and then we can save it now I'm gonna ch now one thing that you're gonna note in BERT if you have a default selected like we do of OS type of Windows we're gonna go back to our preview here layout and go back to preview you're gonna see Windows selected by default but now it's in order Linux Unix Windows it's exactly what we want okay so now we need to do the same here for our server name uh, we need to make it show it shows only our host name so it's this it's a very similar process but because uh, because we're going to go back to our library but because our data set here that determines our resource is no longer a scripted type it changes somewhat so under resources we do see our, our output column of resource now if we edit this we notice it's a its data source is our ITM which essentially is going toward Tivoli Data Warehouse and the query is pulling back our information our data that we need so this query says select distinct our trim server name as resource from NT system DV so essentially it's picking out all the servers in the table NT system DV and this works out well if you're only selecting Windows servers well how about if you're selecting you know Unix or Linux how does that work as we see in the report well if we close this guy out and we go to our script tab again and then before open script we see 
some JavaScript uh, settings here. It says if our parameters that we select, our OS type parameter that we select value is Linux, then we're going to change this dot query text, meaning we're going to replace it with select distinct system name uh, from our table, uh, our Linux table. And if it's Unix, we're going to we're going to change it to, instead of server name again. We're going to change it to system name, and we're going to do it from our system underscore db table. So that's how it picks from the different uh, tables correctly, depending on the OS type that you select. Now. How are we going to make it so that it shows only the host name as the label rather than the whole, uh, the, the whole system name or server name that we receive from the database? So we're going to go ahead and edit the resources. We're going to go to our computed columns tab because this is where we can do functions to existing uh, columns in, uh, in the data set. Click New. We're going to give this column name. We're going to call them resource label. We're going to give a data set string, data type string, and we're going to click this function button. And it brings up this expression builder, which is quite nice because we can easily access some of the important things to us, like data sets. So we're going to click on data sets and click on our subcategory, and we have our, our resource output column here. And we want to modify it, so that's great. So we're going to take this guy, double click, and he'll put in the correct uh, uh, the, the correct uh, syntax for us, but we want to modify them. So we don't want to see the primary colon ITM colon NT. We want to just see the host name of ITM. So what we can do is go to our native JavaScript functions, click on string as a subcategory, and we have a few options of functions that we can do to affect the string and what it looks like. The one we're going to use is replace. And, and that's because replace essentially takes a regular expression that you use, and if it's there, it will replace it with the, the, the string that you put in the function of parameters. So we're just going to put a dot here, and you can actually then double click here, and it'll put the replace text here. And to indicate that uh, the match string is going to be a regular expression, you need to use, I believe these are forward slashes. Uh, so we put the slash there, and we notice that uh, it starts with primary colon. Um, well, say there's other things that starts with something colon, and we want to remove all of them, right? If we were just to put starts with primary colon and remove that, like we can do here, primary colon, I will do that here, primary colon, the caret means starts with, and put a comma, and we're going to replace it with the empty string. So that will remove the primary uh, colon in the beginning. So we click OK and test this out. 